we are going to apply the Reynolds transport theorem to conservation of mass and then work through um, a few examples. Okay, so conservation of mass. And you already know what that is. That's simply dm cis by dt equals zero. In this case, b is mass, m, and b is equal to one. In other words, you can say b is equal db by dm, okay? And we know what that is. Say that d by dt of the integral over the system of uh, rho b of rho <laughs> dv that's equal partial by partial t of the integral over the control volume of rho dv plus the integral um, fluxes um, over the control surface of rho u dot n ds and that's equal to zero and that is what we call the continuity equation or the law of mass conservation. Continuity equation applies to compressible, incompressible fluids, um, and all sorts of things, okay? So next we're gonna um, um, take this and do a few examples with the integral form. Let's work through a few examples on mass conservation. Example one, okay. Um, a, you're given um, this flow in a, um, a fire fighter's hose. Then you know there's kind of flow coming in, flow coming out. Um, this has an uh, area a one diameter d one. This has area a two diameter d two and they want to determine, um, local regulations require that the exit velocity V2 is at least 20 meters per second, and they wanna figure out what um, mass flow rate is required um, at the inlet over here. Okay, so we can simply apply um, the integral form mass conservation. It's an overkill, I know, but um, it's just good practice. Um, to do so, we're going to assume that we have uniform velocities at the inlet, uniform velocities at the outlet, all pointing um, normal to the surface. So we apply mass conservation. That's d by dt of the integral of rho dv over the um, control volume. Well, first we haven't defined the control volume. Uh, that's, that's a big mistake. So we have to first define our control volume as being um, this whole section of the pipe. Okay, so these are the control surfaces over here. Okay, plus the integral over the control surface of rho u dot n um, ds, that's equal to zero. Now, because the density is constant, I'm assuming they're pumping water, we're gonna take this to be zero because there's no rate of change, there's no time rate of change um, for the mass in this control volume for the density. Um, that leaves us with this integral. Um, now, we only have two surfaces where there's flow coming in and flow leaving um, because everything uh, along the kind of the pipe diameter over here, the surface, the velocity is tangential, so there's nothing um, coming in. So this really degenerates to the integral over um, the area A1, okay, of um, rho U1 dot N1 ds plus the integral um, over area a2 of rho uh, v2 dot n2 ds equals zero. Now we said u1 is parallel to n1, so that's equal, um, it's parallel to l1, and it's in the opposite direction, so this is just simply equal to the minus of the integral over a1 of rho, and then um, u1 the magnitude of u1 so that's just simply you want to make sure that uh, uh, u1 is given as a value um, times um, da1 plus the integral over a2 of rho same thing over here and this is positive so v2 
times dA2 is equal to zero. And then we can just uh, simply carry out the integral now because it, rho and u are constant, so this gives us rho um, v1 a1 plus rho v2 a2 is equal to zero. And that gives you your basic formula for what your pumping capacity should be. Um, this is kilograms per second, so this is uh, minus Q1 plus, um, what do we want over here? Um, rho V2 A2 is equal to zero, so that implies that Q1 is simply um, rho A2 V2. Depending on A2 and rho, um, you can determine your pumping capacity at the inlet. Um, you can give um, specific numbers um, um, over here, but it's fairly straightforward. Another way to do this is rather than looking at the mass flow rate, you can look at the volume flow rate. So A1, you can just get rid of the density and you end up with A1 V1 and A2 V2. Um, so you get A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2 and V1 is equal to A2 V2 over A1 to determine the velocity that is needed at the end.